grew up all over the place, a little bit in outside of Chicago and Naperville, also in the Valley in LA. And I spent some time in Virginia, um, Northern Virginia, close to DC as well. But I was born in Florida, so. I was born outside of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Grew up uh, around there, lived all over the place, lived, uh, yeah, I just lived everywhere. I started playing instruments like violin piano since I was four and five and so I had a very kind of stereotypical Asian sort of upbringing and high school is all about school and piano for me so I didn't have very many friends I just kind of practiced all the time. I got into music very very young I remember having a little a little turntable with a stack of 45s. I was attracted to blues music when I was a kid and then Black Sabbath came onto my radar and uh, kind of the, the hard rock thing took over for a while. Well, my parents were very strict with me so everything besides classical music was the devil basically so we weren't allowed to listen to anything else. I remember trying to purchase something that wasn't classical like a little tape it was actually like a little Simpsons tape and my, my parents found it and I got in trouble and it immediately got smashed and thrown away, so... Oh, <laughs> it's heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. I really got exposed to classical music really in depth, which I think a lot of people, other people don't get to do. And then as a result in college, it just really pushed me to just want to explore more and really appreciate things. And I had this way of looking at music which is from like a classical sort of standpoint so I'll take like I don't know like um, electronic music and then apply sort of classical theories and themes to it and stuff and even just like our songs right now there's a very classical sort of perspective I have to it like the way we build it and the themes and like I think of them in movements and things like that. Russian composers were just really eye-opening for me it was the first time I was told to make a racket on the piano, like be really noisy, like Stravinsky, Prokofiev, and make really dissonant sounds. It's still in like a very kind of accessible way too, but it was the first time I was told to just not be beautiful and quiet, but just be really, really noisy. And I was constantly being pushed to make more noise. So that was kind of like the thing that really like was a turning point for me in music, so. I, uh, somebody threw a really cheap guitar at me I remember, literally threw it at me. And uh, it had a broken neck, I remember, so it would never stay in tune. So it was kind of like always fucking around with these just just weird tunings, and I was like trying to get like a, just like kind of a, any sort of droney kind of Velvet Underground sound I could out of it. And so that was kind of my first exposure to like instruments. I couldn't drum. I was a I was even worse than my brother, and he was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> classical music came like later in my life when I was when I was an older person, and I remember hearing "Transfigured Night" by uh, Arnold Schoenberg, and that to me was just like a moment in my life where I just like everything changed. I was I was I was just struck by the the beauty of it, the violence of it, just just the jarring you know, transitions of it, the, the almost the complicated paths that would lead me down. It was, it was mind-bending. For right now, the way we've been working is I kind of just live with an idea for a while. Try not to, you know, don't, don't really do anything with it. You know, try not to force it. Just let it happen, live with it and then slowly, incrementally, letting it creep out. And then, but as part of that process, the, the incrementally like creeping out process, it becomes a more absorbing thing to do, if that makes any sense. So it becomes, it becomes like a, a, an actual entity that, that you know, takes up a lot of you know, bandwidth in my mind. Usually, by the time he's come to me, I know that he's been working on something since we live together and I see him, you know, pacing around the house or smoking way too much or, or like writing things on his book. So he brings it to me, I know that he's been working on it and I, I just listen, I listen to it and 
for me, it's just a very organic thing. I just start feeling something and I just start playing melodies. And that's uh, yeah. I mean, I think that was that's kind of like the thing that drew me initially to like start creating music with Esther is just like this natural, almost unspoken language that we have. To me, that's like an in, like just a completely invaluable thing. And she's so completely versatile. Had every every either vocalizing, piano, violin. Like she's just so completely versatile. I guess like a key part in the process for me is like after he brings it to me and I'm like just being organically just adding to it. Like there's a there's a point in the process where he starts talking to me about the conceptual parts behind it and that's like one of the things I love about working with JR is that he has this like these these themes and really like really dark themes and concepts behind everything we're doing. And when I hear that, that really is like a central part to the creation of the performance as well. We're going to be recording this new record called The Alone Rush, which is, you know, Esther and I and maybe, you know, a few other, few other contributors. And it's, uh, I'm really, really excited about doing it. It feels like, you know, to go from something of like so expansive, what we did with like, you know, 30 people and shrink it down to, you know, two, three, for maybe people, you know, is just completely. I'm really excited by the prospect, and then the 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 inspiration behind the project is really has an incredibly powerful meaning to me. So I'm really ha really happy to finally get this out and express it. And it's like definitely reflective because we were here in Chicago for a long time, and then we moved out to like the Oregon coast to Astoria and led this really like reclusive lifestyle. It was super, yeah, reclusive super reclusive and very, very yeah. like, almost just like two monks like yeah. living. We were, like, we, were like, we were like two stones in a very small uh, bag and we just kept like rubbing up against each other and it, kind of polishing each other, you know? And, and it, you know, it takes, it takes, it takes a lot, man, to like, to do that, to be, to be so close to somebody so continuously over and over and even when we traveled it was still like we were together and like yeah. working together so it's like we kind of developed almost like a, a strange cult yeah. like one person mentality <laughs> out of this whole thing so which so, was which yeah. was really interesting because i've never done that before in my life so that process was completely fascinating so there's like there's there's a definitely a bit like that sort of tone in the Oh, it's very, very well represented in the in the new music. I feel like there's a lot of just like seamless blending, and like, and like, yeah, these two have spent a lot of fucking time. <laughs>